Have you ever encountered a situation where you're trying to describe a complex process and the AI just doesn't get it right away or it requires a lot of back and forth? What if I told you there is a free open source markdown language that can transform your AI interactions from confusing text walls into crystal clear visual diagrams? In the next 10 minutes, I'll show you how mermaid charts can revolutionize the way you communicate with AI. And best part, at the end of this video, you will also know how to use AI to create these stunning diagrams using the mermaid language. So let's try the magic of mermaid today. So first, what is mermaid? Mermaid generates diagrams from markdown like text. It is a JavaScript based diagramming and charting tool. Okay, that's a bit mouthful, but don't leave just yet. Even if you have no coding background or you don't even know what JavaScript is, you're totally fine. And that's the benefit of living in the age of generative AI because we can train our AI to understand this easily. Now, another good thing is if you go to mermaid.live, there is actually a live editor for you to quickly go through what kind of diagrams is available using the mermaid language. And just look at this. It's not really typical codes. It's a text-based language. And what I found to be very useful as a first timer, which I was only a few days ago, is actually to use Notion. I'm not a super heavy Notion user, but it's a fantastic tool to instantly render out the diagrams using Notion's built-in mermaid files. Before we ask AI to do anything, I think it's really important we understand the mermaid chart logic. I know I said no programming course in this video. Please just give me a few minutes and give yourself a few minutes. It will benefit all of us in the long run. So here I just open a Notion page. You can feel free to use mermaid.live to follow along. Okay, so in Notion, let's start a code block by doing slash code. And you see here, mermaid, click on it. It is giving us a simple diagram just really quickly. So here, this is the graph name. You can write graph or flow chart. And this is orientation. TD means top down. You can also try bottom top. So you see the arrow direction switched. And you can also do left and right or right left. So it's really simple like that. And this is the most simplistic form of a diagram. And you directly write what you want to put on these rectangulars. Like just type mermaid and do dash dash arrow, then space in other word for your next rectangular process. And if you want Rather than a solid arrow, you want a dotted one. You just put a dot in between these two dashes and you get a dotted arrow. Okay, but in today's tutorial, let's try a fun one. So let's delete all of this. So let's build a flow chart. Think about it. The possibilities are infinite. It can help us understand a messy conversation between you and your client if you have the transcript. Or if you are a developer, you want to build a process diagram to better understand the user journey for your app. And then for today, let's try a decision making flowchart. So first we just say flowchart and let's give it an orientation. Let's try top down TD. Now I usually do a tab here, so it's visually easier for us to follow. Instead of directly saying the text we want on our rectangular boxes, let's actually get them an easy reference. So we don't always have to type the same lengthy text every time. Let's do just A. We need to specify the text on the specific rectangular box. We use the square brackets. And today I want to view the chart to help me decide if I want more coffee. So let's say the first box is want more coffee. And remember that you cannot put any space after A and the square brackets. Say if I do a space here, then it'll show up an error. And fun thing is you can actually put emojis here if you want. Let's add a coffee symbol here. Nice. Then we do space, two dashes, arrow, 
For those of you who are familiar with flowcharts, know that the most common shapes we use in the flowcharts are number one, rectangulars. They represent processes. And number two is actually a diamond box. That's where a decision making is happening. We need to ask a question or we need to choose from multiple ones. How do we tell Mermaid that we want a diamond box? So here, still without any space after the letter B, instead of the square brackets, we use the curly brackets. Let's say this decision making point is I need to know what time is it. So you see, we now have a diamond shape here. Now here, after B, we know we need to have at least two different pathways. Otherwise, we don't need a diamond shape. So here, we just say B, and now we don't need to retype. What time is it? Still, two dashes, arrow, to C. Okay, now here, we need to specify the condition, which is a descriptor for the arrows. And how do we add some text on the arrows? That's immediately after the arrows, we use two vertical bars. And within that, let's say before 2 p.m. All right, you see there's a descriptor condition on top of the arrows. And similarly, let's do another condition, which is after 2 p.m. Now here I want another decision making point because after 2 p.m. if something else happens, maybe I still want coffee. Then I do curly brackets. For example, do I want to sleep tonight? Trust me, 100% for me, almost the answer is yes, but you never know. Then you see here we have another diamond shape decision making point. Okay, let's do the last two lines. D. So if the condition is, yes, I do want to sleep, let's do yes in between the vertical bars and get a E rectangular. Let's do a regular rectangular box, switch to decaf. Okay, see here, this is the yes condition. And let's do a no condition, which is D, arrow, no, F. Let's see here, full caffeine for those who do not want to sleep. Okay, so here, I'm just using a couple lines of text and then I got a pretty nice diagram, flowchart. Now here you might ask, this is kind of plain. I want some color and you got it. I mean, there are ways to add it using text too, but hey, we have AI. This is 2025 already. Let's just ask AI. Let's just copy this text. Let's go to ChatGPT, let's just ask. I have this mermaid chart. Can you help me to dial it with color so it look more visually appealing and professional? And then just give the code. Okay, now we can just copy from styling. And these, I mean, these are just hex codes for color. Let's just copy this and go back to Notion and uh, paste here. And yeah, instantly magic. Whoa, see, after I paste in these from ChatGPT, it got a much nicer flowchart. And then if you have more specific needs, like you just love green or certain color combination, go for it, right? If I were to type these line by line and, and I have to look up the specific hex code for a specific color, it will take me at least an hour on top of building this chart. So a lot of time saved. Now, similarly, I try to turn this meeting notes about a Q4 product launch planning. Yes, it's hard to read. And I asked ChatGPT to create a flowchart in the mermaid language. And this is what I get afterwards. Much easier to understand. Now here you might ask, what's special about using a mermaid language versus just asking ChatGPT to generate a flowchart? You can do that, but there's a higher chance that ChatGPT will hallucinate and it's hard to do any version control. For example, if ChatGPT generated a flowchart, it's hard to ask it to change it into a certain color or add a process or remove a process it's very time consuming. By using Mermaid, we significantly reduce the rate of hallucination and uncertainty 
because we are sharing a code-based solution with AI. And in return, the AI can better understand us with much less ambiguities. And you have to agree with me, right? It's a lot of fun. So whether you are trying to explore how to improve your productivity, communicating with AI for your business or your personal life, I highly recommend you try out Mermaid with AI. So, and as always, please let me know down in the comment section below if you have tried this AI workflow and any feedback you have. See you next time.